Hello and welcome to CS4010, the Quack W tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to guide you how to do simulation for earthquake for a farm dam. So in the first step, we need to create a Quack W tutorial first. And in this, we need to change the first one to initial static to generate the initial condition. And after that, I can add a dynamic analysis underneath uh, for this one. So um, for the quick analysis, I need to draw my own water table. So I choose water table from the drop down list. And for the dynamic quick, I choose the initial pore water pressure from the pattern analysis. Another thing I need to pay attention here is I should uh, define the horizontal earthquake record from here. So I just import one by clicking on import and select the accelerogram I have. As you can see, when you click on view, you will have the accelerogram in terms of G. And this is editable. If you click over here and change the peak access, for example, 0 0.5 and apply, and you click on view again, now you can see the accelerogram has a new peak at about 0 0.5 of G. I think that is good to me, so I just click on OK. And you can see now the time has changed and this is actually 10 seconds. I think it's on fire to me now. I just closed it. And now in the first step, I need to draw my geometry. So I can draw it from the quick W analysis, the first analysis, or I can draw from geometry. In general, I often draw from this because I have more tool over here. However, for geometry only, you can just draw from 2D geometry. Now I draw the regions. So my farm dam has a foundation of 5 meter soil. So I click from here and go up by 5 meter. And I have the farm dam about 4 meter high. So I should select about 50 meter length. That's enough for me to simulate all of the lateral um, effect. Now my frame dam has a height of 4 meter and the slope is 1 to 3. So therefore it's about 12 meter for the slope. I just start from somewhere about 12 over here and then go up to 9 meter and 12 meter. So this is my crest. The crest width is 2 meter. So I just go horizontally by 2 meter and go down for the downstream slope. The downstream slope is often steeper than the upstream slope to save up some money. However, in your assignment, the downstream slope is 1, 2, 3, 2. So therefore, I just click over here and finish my dam. And that may be enough for a farm dam. Uh, we just try to simulate something difficult. So I think my farm dam is made of sand and it has a clay core. So I'm trying to draw my clay core in here. Uh, and because my clay core has the non-integer dimension, so therefore I should change this one to 0 0.5. It's a bit tiny. Yep, so now I have this one from here to here, down to here, back here and go up here. Yep, on good to me, except this a bit steepy. If you want to have it symmetric, so just click on modify object, click on the point 12 and move it by x by 0 0.5 meter and move. In the next step, I need to draw the drainage at the downstream for my dam. So I just use the reason. And get this one done. Yeah, so here is my geometry. Now, I need a few more points. The first one is the inlet 
of water into this fan dam. So therefore, I need the water level at the upstream side should be this point and a few more points for the water table inside the dam. For example, I click on this point and this point. Yep, I think all good to me now. Now I just move to the next step when I have to draw the material. So now I need to define the material by go to material and define it and add. Uh, I have given you four different types of soil so you just enter the number here so my first one should be sand i choose the linear elastic one for this you need weight poison ratio damping ratio and gmax After that, I just clone to have a new soil. This one should be and the last one. Okay, I think all good to me now. Now I just try to define the more property for sand because you know during the earthquake the pore pressure in sand increase very quickly and it may cause the liquefactions. So I need to define the pore water pressure function for this and it depends on the cyclic function as well. So in here I add a new one which is my pore water pressure and I add from the default one with the end exponent is 0 0.57. If you want to edit data point, you can direct edit directly from here by changing the value or you can watch it from this one. I think this one good to me. I just close this and choose this one from the one I have. And in here, I create a new function for my cyclic shear versus shear ratio. So, my new function will be for the medium sand. And I choose it from the default. I use estimation and choose a medium low sand. Yep. And here are the data point. I think this is good to me. I just close and choose this one from this. Okay, all good. Now, I may want to change the color for the easy drawing. As I told you before, my color depends on the hydraulic conductivity. Uh, so, the one with lower hydraulic conductivity will have a darker color, for example, brown. Foundation. Maybe a bit brighter. Gravel. Yep, I think on wood to me and I just close this. Now I need to assign the material to the domain I just draw. So I click on draw material. Here is my clay. Foundation. Gravel. And sand. And I also have to do the same thing for the other analysis. So clay. Foundation, gravel, and sand. Okay, now I can be back to here. In here, I need to set up the boundary condition. So I just go to define 
and set up the boundary condition. You can see we have four default boundary condition, and I need one more for the stress from uh, the water. So I use new stress and strain boundary condition. I use this at a hydro hydrostatic pressure, and my constant should be about at 8.5 meter. Yep, on good to me. Now I just close this and I try to apply my pressure. So apply the boundary condition. You know, for the boundary, I need to apply the movement boundary condition. So I should fix it by X and fix it by XY for the bottom. This way, the soil can settle down a bit, but it cannot move horizontally. Now I also need to apply the reservoir condition to my dam and I think that is for the dynamic quake conditions I just try to use the fix by Y for the lateral boundary because now it can shake but it cannot go up and down it will be in a 10 seconds only and fix XY for the bottom and now I apply no I don't need this one because it's going to be inherited from the initial stress state I think that's good to me okay so in the next step I'm going to draw my water table so this one will be 8.5 from the left on the way to here to here, to here, to this point, and on the way out here. So this is my water table. Yep, I think I'm fine with this one. Now I just try to start solving this. I need to save it, and for example, I save it at a test. Yep. Now I think I have the simulation right here. Ooh. The mesh is really coarse, so therefore the result may be not accurate. So I'm trying to redo this one with um, different mesh. So I should get the mesh up about 0 0.5 meter. Yep. Yep, good to me. Now I try to solve it again. Okay, seem good to me now. Now I just go to see my... Oh, the mesh is really crazy because it has some exaggerated um, deformations. I just want to see my pore pressure, so now in here I draw a contour of the pore water pressure. It should be something like this. And I'm fine with that. Let's see the pore pressure change. Yep. So it seems good to me. Now I want to see the history of the earthquake displacement I need to draw some history point or I just can do directly from here so I can make a graph I add a new graph for example will be the displacement of the crest or maybe as a time crest and in here I set the location at this point for example like that and I try to get not stress but the displacement versus the time and I select from the own time step. So here will be the displacement of the crest during the earthquake. As you can see that it can go up to about 0 0.35 meter because of a really strong earthquake. Uh, so 
Your assignment required to find out the maximum displacement during the earthquake. You need to go through everything, every step to see where you have the maximum displacement and then try to draw the graph of that point during the earthquake and then plot it out. I hope my tutorial gives you some idea how to do the simulation with QuakeW and see you in the next tutorial.